Here we're going to show you a video of a fountain. Uh, this is what the fountain looks like as a finished product. The rest of the video will be showing you all of the steps that we used to produce the fountain. You see here that we'll start uh, from the ground up. And so the first thing that needs to go down is the tarp so that our water can run in the right direction. It may be difficult to see, but from the near side of the tarp to the far side of the tarp, the ground naturally drops about a foot. And so we're getting everything already starting at the bottom. In addition to the tarp on the bottom, we used a pond liner, a very thick rubber material that's going to ensure that it does not break and all the water runs where it's supposed to. You can see we've added some extra pads in the center here. The rocks for this project were really big, and so we wanted to make sure that the pond liner didn't tear. So one thing that we did was we added this old belt lining from a grain elevator in the center to give it some more support. More mats here. You can see the orange is going to be the center of our rock. Uh, we know that we will work from there and move our way out. It's important that we put the PVC in before we start placing our rock. This PVC is inch and a half diameter and the horizontal piece or the piece that will go on the ground is 10 feet long and the vertical piece that will be pushing the water out the top of the fountain is 8 feet long. Here we've placed a few more mats and we've drawn a few circles where our first three rocks are going to go. The first three rocks are the most important because it's going to hold the structure and it's going to keep things straight. Some of the rocks came from the excavation of the house. You can see the house in the background there. And so as long as we had the backhoe there, all of the first rocks that we set with the backhoe actually only took about an hour or an hour and a half. We hand-picked each of the rocks for each place, especially on the lowest level. Uh, so here we are looking and making sure that we get the precise rock for the right location. The first rock is in place, as you can see where we wanted it, we're standing up the PVC pipe to make sure that that stays on the center. Another rock is added uh, and we are going to get more. We had to move the PVC pipe so that we could get the rock in place and it looks like uh, three rocks isn't quite going to work. As you can see it turned out we needed four rocks uh, to get the base started so that we could put our fountain pipe where we wanted it. As you can see the biggest rock is coming next. We want to make sure to put it in the right spot because we won't have the ability to move it once it's in place. One at a time we're working with the backhoe to make sure that things get placed where they need to be and also not to break when they get placed. We want to make sure that we're very careful but also we're starting to form our perimeter on which the rest of the fountain will be built. We did a lot of thinking between placing the rocks, making sure that we put them in the right place, but even though we had a general idea of what we wanted to do, we had to stop and do a lot of thinking along the way. Here we placed some more rocks, again making our perimeter sturdy so that the rest of the foundation will work as best possible. It was also important that we didn't wreck our PVC, that we held on to it uh, during most of the steps. Careful placement was important as we're trying not to get our legs stuck in the rock. You can also see how large the rocks are compared to a person. Uh, definitely could not be handled by people. We got the rocks from a local field, so we're definitely recycling what the Lord made for us uh, many, many millions of years ago. And we are nearing completion of the outer ring. You can start to see that the base is being formed and what the rest of the fountain will look like. From here on out, it will be important that we keep the PVC level and upright. You can see here with the mats, we have three layers between the rocks and the ground to make sure that the water flows where it's supposed to. Most of the largest rocks are in place and so we can wiggle some of the smaller of the large rocks by hand. Here I honestly think that it's just trying to look taller than the rest of us. You can see here that 
there's some mud on the rock and there's not a lot of it. Uh, not to worry uh, if you are making a fountain and there's mud on the rocks. The first few rains will take care of that. Another picture of our first layer. Uh, we will start to put some trim around it next. You can see our gray collection tank here. It's a 100 gallon tank. We're going to put that in the ground and we're going to put our pump in that and that's going to run our pump through the PVC over the fountain. We'll use an excavator to dig a hole so that we can put our tank in the ground so that when all the water runs down the pump doesn't run dry. You can see here we bought a pump. It's a 4,000 gallon per hour pump. We cost about $180 at Menards and it will shoot about two feet above wherever the top of the PVC is. The pump also has a quick coupler on it so that we can take it out of the water for easy storage in the winter. As you can see, we've cut the tarp, folded it up, and began the process of putting our retaining wall block in as our trim and the edge of our pond. You might be able to see here that the tarp won't quite fit inside the retaining wall block. You'll see why in a couple of slides. First you'll see here we put an extra piece of PVC over top of our original PVC. We wanted the bigger pipe to be a protectant so that the rocks wouldn't break or cut through the smaller PVC and wreck our fountain. We wanted to make sure that the water flowed towards the center of the pond and over to where the tank was and so we wanted to make sure the outsides were higher than the center and so we did that by putting it over the first layer of retaining wall block. Our block here will be two layers high with the tarp in the middle so you won't really see the tarp too much but the, it'll still have the same effect where the water will run where we want it to go. We wanted to test our pump to make sure that the water ran. You can see we're going to add some more rock and adjust our pipe, but that'll be in a little bit. This is maybe a, a clearer and a more beautiful picture uh, coming in from the sun from the west. We ran electrical wire from the pump to a switch in the house so we can watch and hear it from the deck. This is another good photo that shows that the water slopes from left to right, so all the water will run into our holding tank. The rest of the rocks can be moved by hand, but again with the help of a wheelbarrow and another person. It's important that we check to make sure that our pipe is level the whole way through to make sure that the rocks haven't adjusted or moved in the process. The rocks got lighter but it was still important that we had two people and a wheelbarrow to help out put the rocks in place. But still important that the rocks get placed precisely where they need to be so that everything goes according to plan. Always be sure to wear gloves whenever you work with rocks or outside, anything sharp edges. You need to keep your hands healthy so that you can keep working. As you can see by now, we've traded in the excavator for a wheelbarrow, definitely a useful tool. Still important to be very careful when placing rocks. We did quite a bit of work between the last slide and this one. You can see we have more brick for the outside and we've built up quite a bit of rock. So we have a, a lot higher level of rock here. As you'll see here in future slides, we've built from the outside in. So the outside is built a little bit larger than the inside. Lots of this work was done in the evening, and so, of course, our pictures are also taken in the evening. We brought a total of 11 pickup loads of rock to the fountain. So some of them were from our farm, some of them were from other farms. You'll be able to see here and in the future slides that we put the larger rocks on the outside and the smaller rocks in the middle. We've done that so that you have a good sturdy foundation but also it makes for a better looking fountain. Here you can see we've cut off the pipe level with the top of the rock. We've also put concrete on top of the rock and the fountain so that the water will flow over the sides of the fountain and not just fall through the center. We're not quite done with the fountain yet but fall is coming in 
things are not going to be able to work out this winter and so we'll wait till spring and we'll do a little bit more tweaking then. This is the final shot with the water coming down. You can see the grass is growing around it and everything is in place. We may have a little bit more to do but this is basically the finished product. Thank you for watching.